When we first moved on to the place, the thing I remember the most was it was a monoculture almost of needle grass, uh, needle and thread. There had been a pretty significant stocking of the place, so the diversity on the rangeland here was almost non-existent. Beyond the house here, there was only one other source of water, so we had some pretty significant trailing and, and erosion because of that. It's very sandy soil, and so we contacted the NRCS in Sturgis. I believe it was Daryl Vig was the uh, conservationist at that time, and he did just, he really helped us out. Helped us put together a plan for water system, for cross fencing, the start of planting trees. We, we planted the first trees with Daryl's advice, and uh, since then, we've planted about 30,000 trees. You know, there's a lot of scars on the landscape that uh, was created from, from people 100 years ago. And uh, not to say what they were doing was negative or perceived as negative at the time, but we still deal with some of those effects now. And, you know, I really feel what they're doing here uh, is, is positively affecting the landscape. And those are going to be things that future generations are, are going to be able to see for, for years and years to come. This is so much more than just stewardship of the land. It's about modeling the behaviors that we all should have, whether we're a homeowner in town, a 10 acre ranchette, or a 10,000 acre ranch. The principles that the Leopold Award stands for and that the Comax put into play every single day here on every acre of this ranch uh, are, are something that we should all reach for. My grandfather and my dad have a deep love for everything wild, whether it be birds or flowers or plants. So we kind of grew up, my brothers and I, not only working on the ranch, but learning what the birds are, the name of the range, plants, um, knowing all the wildlife, enjoying hunting, fishing, things like that. There's a misconception among people that grazing cattle is not good for the environment. And I look at these pieces of property where we have intact ecosystems because that property is still able to be grazed by cattle, produce revenue for us, we're benefiting wildlife, that ecosystem is intact, whereas if we weren't able to graze cattle on that ecosystem, that ecosystem would probably at some point have been farmed under and would be growing row crops. And not that there's anything against row crops, but these ecosystems are intact still today because we're able to graze cattle to benefit the wildlife and us as well. The reason I really enjoy working with Gary and Reed is just their observance of what's happening in the range. Uh, to go out there with those guys and, and you know just look at you know, all the different forbs and uh, grasses out there and, and just watch them you know kind of observe and, and evaluate the range is just just really tells me that you know they've they've got the, the long-term interest in their pastures uh, at the forefront. When we moved onto the place, there was no wildlife. Those things have always been important to us, so we started focusing on some things that we could do to help attract them and also to get some diversity back into the ranch where we've got some uh, carrying capacity to make, make the operation viable. The whole thing was truly a family affair because we were trying to build a business and build a ranch at the same time. Amy did uh, a lion's share of, of the work when it came to feeding the livestock, and we had four sons involved. And when it came to planting the trees, preparing those seed beds, and helping do some cross fencing and all that sort of thing, a huge part of it was family. When we move our cattle, because they're used to the rotational grazing, you just go to the gate and you holler, come boss, come boss, and they are ready to come, and they just come and go through, and shut the gate behind them, it works really well and it doesn't take them very long to train them that way. Last year when we had the terrible drought, we had a new pasture every week where if we had just had the seven original or what we'd had before, we'd only had seven weeks worth of grazing and that way we had 13 weeks worth of grazing and every week they have new grass and every time you put them on fresh grass it makes them eat, grow better, look better. We're seeing very good benefits. They're very knowledgeable about what they're doing. They have purpose in what they're doing. Uh, and it's not just to, to earn some cost share. They're, they're, they're truly trying to, to improve the place. And they're very well thought out about what they do. 
Uh, and it's, it's, it's all for the future generation, and you get that sense every time you work with them. It's been a fun experience going through the process of taking a piece of property that had been abused in the past, um, putting some inputs into it, putting some good management into it, and watching how that property really, really bloomed. It's great to see that people are starting to recognize uh, native range as something of great value. The Leopold Conservation Award, it, it's not just a, a plaque that you hang on the wall. It, it is accepting the responsibility to continue to, to spread the word and to share the things that you've learned over the years, share the, the knowledge, the successes, the failures. It's about leaving it better than you found it. We are honored beyond words to receive this award.